Hello, welcome to this video where we look at the ratio test and the root test. It should be maybe two to three videos, and I want to make sure we, we know where we're at in the, in the whole um, big scheme of things. And so I want to start out by just, just taking a look back. And so um, on this first slide here, I want you to know that um, we started with sequences. And basically, we're trying to find the limit as n goes to infinity on a sequence. And so basically, it end up being just reviving all the things that you did for limits at infinity with calc one. Okay. And from there we switch switch gears and started talking about series. And we've been talking about series for a while now. We have um 10 different tests that we are to um be able to master in order to be able to figure out whether a series converges or diverges. We have a, a group of videos talking about the geometric series, the telescoping series, and the test for divergence. Then we have a group of videos talking about the integral test, the P series, and the two comparison tests, the limit comparison test and the direct comparison test. In this video, we'll be able to uh, take a look at the ratio test and the root test. And we'll have another video, a set of videos that will um, look at the alternating series test. And so that represents where we, this is an overview of where we were, where we're headed. Um, let's go to the ratio test now. The ratio test says the following. If you have a series where the terms inside the series are called a sub n. Now, if that a sub n represents a sequence, then what we can do with that sequence is divide successive terms. There will be expressions, though, a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Look at the limit as n goes to infinity on that dividing of successive terms like a 10 over a 9, a 11 over, we don't look at them individually, we we'll actually do the limit with the formula, and also there's absolute value bars around the, the ratio as well. And so that limit, we'll call that capital L. Based on the value of capital L, we can tell whether the series converges or diverges. All right. If capital L is less than 1, the series is actually called absolutely convergent. That's, a, that's a, a concept that'll come up in the next set of videos. After talking about the alternating series test, we get to then break apart convergence into two different levels of convergence. And so by us slapping these absolute value bars in the executing of this particular test, we get a higher level of convergence with this test. It's, it's called absolutely convergent. I'll explain that in a, in, a, in a video to come, but it's convergent. If the limit is greater than one, or if the limit isn't infinite, which, you know, I guess that counts as well as being greater than one, um, the series is divergent. So we take care of less than one, we take care of greater than one, guaranteed that the limit is positive. There's no need, there's no way this limit could be negative with the absolute value bars in there. So there's only one other case then. What happens when the limit is equal to one? And unfortunately, we have no idea what, what we have to use another test. The test is inconclusive. Um, there, once again, are the levels of convergence, absolutely convergence versus conditionally convergent uh, versus just strictly divergent. And so we'll get to those levels of convergence later. But just know that um, if it's equal to one, you have to try another test. OK, here's a nice number line. We'll sum it all up for you. So if, um, if you're looking at the, the, the value of the limit, capital L, and you're looking at being between zero and one, you're convergent for your series. And then if you're greater than one, you're divergent. This is opposite of the other kinds of tests that we have. It's based off of some other criteria. The P series is exactly the opposite of this. Make sure you don't get them mixed up. All right, so that's the ratio test. This ends up being the most useful of all the tests. We end up using this um, when we go later on to talk about power series, trying to figure out what X values the power series will converge for. Most often we use the ratio test. So it's the one you gotta really get down. Um, it has a partner called the root test, and the root test has the same conclusions as the ratio test. It's just based off of a different limit. So if your if your terms inside of your series, your a sub n terms, if they if they um, form a sequence that you could find this limit for, then <clears throat> based on the value of this limit, you'll have the same response that you had for the ratio test. This limit is taking the absolute value of all your terms making every term positive, and then raising it to the one over nth power, taking the nth root of a sub n. 
the root test is good when you have the ability to be able to write your terms a sub n all raised to the nth power or some formula on n like n plus one or n squared. If you have the ability to be able to raise it to that power, then we can say that the root test would be a good thing to do. Conclusions are exactly the same. Less than one, you'll get convergent. Greater than one, you'll get divergent. Equal to one, you'll get, oh my gosh, I have to try another test. And the same number line is true as well. Okay. The ratio test and the root test. And um, in this video, we'll take a look at the, in the time that we have left, let's try to take a look at both. So example number one, n cubed on top of four to the n. That's your a sub n formula. And we're going to execute the ratio test on this one. So with the ratio test, we're looking at dividing a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. I first want to show you how bad it is just writing it out. You have to replace all the n's with n plus ones. That's the numerator. And then you take the original terms a sub n, you put that in a denominator. Instead of dealing with this mess of a fraction, a, um, a fraction on top of a fraction and underneath a, there's a fraction. Instead of dealing with that mess, here's how I want you to handle these problems. What you should do is do the following. It gets you right to the heart of the matter in a fast way. So what we're going to do is replace the ends with n plus ones and give each term its own fraction. And the location of where you put the, the term is based on the location, the original location of the n term. So I replace n cubed with n plus one cubed. I replace four to the n plus one, uh, four to the n with four to the n plus one. But in a separate fraction, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. In, in the dividing of the one fraction by the other, what happens with the original a sub n is it gets um, reciprocated and multiplied. So the original n cubed would be in the denominator and the original um, four to the n would be in the numerator. And we separate it like this so we can focus our attention separately on these two separate fractions, find the limit on these fractions, and then be able to quickly go about our way answering the question of what's the conclusion of the ratio test. All right. The action that we should take next is algebraic. We should take this four to the n plus one and break it apart. The exponent four to the n plus one should be broken apart as four to the n times four. You can put a one there if you want. Why would we do that? So that we can cancel with the four to the n that's in the numerator. Okay, what about this other guy? n plus one quantity cubed on top of n cubed. What happens as n goes to infinity on that? It's going to go to one. Uh, you either do L'Hopital rule three times, which I don't recommend, or you can look at it and say, oh, it's a polynomial divided by another polynomial. You don't have to multiply out n plus one cubed, but it's a, it's a cubic with the lead coefficient of one. And so, um, yeah, that limits a one. So the second fraction goes to a fourth, while the first fraction goes to one, n goes to infinity, answers a fourth. This means that when you divide successive terms, you'll get basically the ratio of one fourth. And the ratio test says, well, when this ratio is less than one, dividing a sub 100 by a sub 99, you should get a fourth. And the ratio test says that that means that the series will converge. This is less than one. And so the series will converge. All right. Okay, great. I want to do... Um, one where we actually do the ratio test. Hold on one second. Can I skip slides? Oh man. I would like to skip to a slide that's later on. All right, that's fine. I'll just uh, skip through my animation then. Um, so I want to make sure I get to a root test example before this video is over. So here we have 2n plus 1 who's raised to the n n that's raised to the 2n okay and we're going to execute the root test because we can write this as all being raised to the nth power it works out really well in the root test you have to take the whole thing to the 1 over n power so we just take the exactly this you don't worry about n plus 1 or anything you take exactly the a sub n and you raise it to the 1 over nth power and so what you can do is Definitely the numerator is raised to the nth power, and you can take the exponent in the denominator and make it so it is raised to the nth power. If you have something that's raised to the 2n power, you can square it first and then raise it to the nth power, and that's what we're doing there. Okay, 
So then we could take the entire fraction and raise it to the nth power. If your numerator is raised to the nth and your denominator is raised to the nth, you can take the whole thing and raise it to the nth. And instead of using a radical symbol, we can use the fractional version of that um, exponent, which is 1 over n. And the algebra is that you're going to cancel those exponents. It's built for that so that we can look at just 2n plus 1 divided by n squared. As n goes to infinity, degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. This limit is an automatic 0, which is less than 1. And the root test is telling you that it's convergent. All right. Great. In the next video, we'll do some more examples. Um, I go back and do example two, and then I'll jump and do example four. But um, hopefully that was helpful. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey, trying to figure out what's going on with Calculus 2. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, ask any questions if you like. Reach out to me. I'll see you in the next video.